I got a bone to pick with you. Hey guys, if you enjoy watching the guitar building videos that I post up here on my YouTube channel, I'd appreciate it if you might consider supporting my channel by visiting my YouTube merch store. Down below the description for this video, you'll see my merch shelf. And on that shelf, I've got t-shirts, plans for building guitars, and plans for making the tools that we use to build guitars. And if you can't see that merch shelf, don't worry, there's a link in the description as well. So just know that any purchase you make is gonna help support this channel, plus you're getting something in return. Now, if you would like to support the channel, but don't wanna spend any money, that's okay too. Just be sure to click the thumbs up button. That'll tell YouTube to promote my videos. Now let's get on with today's video. I always make my own guitar nuts, and the reason is I can be assured that the nut is gonna perform the best way it possibly can. You can use a prefabricated, pre-slotted nut, but in my experience, you typically have to fine tune the nut in order for it to work properly. So I end up just making my own. And I'm gonna start by taking this chunk of cow femur bone. And you can buy cow femur bone from wherever they sell pet supplies. And what you wanna do is you wanna purchase a femur that has no coating and isn't stuffed with anything, just a plain cow femur bone. You can also sometimes purchase them at a butcher shop or the meat department at your local grocery store. But in that case, you're gonna to have to do quite a bit of work to clean it up. You're gonna to have to boil it out and you're gonna to have to let it dry. With the uh, femur bones that are sold at the pet supply stores, they're usually dry and ready to use. But from one of those bones, I can typically get anywhere from 20 to 25 blanks that work really well in as a nut. And the reason why I use a cow femur bone is because the femur bone supports the weight of the cow, so it has the highest density of all the bones in a cow, and they're pretty common. First thing I've gotta do is measure the width of the slot that the nut's gonna fit into, and I'll set that on my digital calipers. That way I can repeatedly check my progress as I'm sanding the nut blank on my belt sander. I have to be careful about sanding the blank to size. I don't want to go too far. I'm going to gradually creep up on the final dimension. So I'll sand uh, most of the shape using the belt sander. But then once I get close, I'll switch over and start hand sanding using a flat surface to form that final shape for the blank. I'll constantly check the fit until it fits nice and snug into that slot. Then I'm ready to proceed with the next step, and that's to draw out the shape of the nut. And I'll use this special pencil that I made by sanding it in half with my belt sander. And I'll just run that across the fretboard on top of the frets. And that draws a line which is going to indicate the absolute bottom of the slots that I'm gonna be cutting later. I'll also mark the sides of the nut since the blank is slightly wider than the neck itself. Then it's back to the disc sander to finalize that shape. And what I wanna do is I wanna sand the top surface of the nut blank until it's about a sixteenth of an inch above that line. I don't wanna take it all the way down to the line, otherwise I'd go too far. I'll also sand the ends of the nut blank so that it's going to be flush with the sides of the fretboard. This is what the nut looks like at this stage. Now I can install the E and the G string so that I can mark the position of where those strings should contact the nut. And I'm using a uh, fine gauged nut slotting file just to put a slight nick in the top of the nut and that's what the string will sit in and I'll do this on both sides and once I have that done I can then proceed with measuring and marking the position of the other strings and at this stage it's a good idea to install the string retainer which is going to apply the correct amount of tension to the D and the G strings
To correctly position the A and the D strings, I'm using a string spacing ruler so that I can accurately mark the position where those strings need to contact the nut. And just like I did before, I'm going to use a thin gauged nut slotting file just to nick the very top of the nut so that the strings can be held into place while I make sure that everything lines up correctly. Before I slot the nut, it's a good idea to set the action for the strings at the bridge. And in this case, I need to raise the saddles to get the strings off the top of the frets and to give the guitar the proper action, which I'm typically measuring at the 17th fret with this instrument. And once I have that done, then I can accurately begin the process of slotting the nut. If I didn't set the action and tried to slot the nut, the end result is probably not going to be accurate and I could end up with a nut that isn't going to perform correctly. Now before I do anything, I'm going to check the action at the first fret using my LMI digital string gauge. Then I can begin the process of gradually enlarging and deepening the slots for each string. And here I'm using my Hosco bass guitar nut slotting files. And I'll file for a little bit and then reinstall the string tighten it up and then check that action again with my digital gauge to make sure I'm getting the number that I want. Now typically that can be um, usually for the E and the A string about uh, 23 thousandths of an inch and then for the D and the G string I'll hit uh, 20 thousandths of an inch. I call this process creeping up on the final depth. You don't want to try to nail it all at once. You want to gradually approach it. Otherwise, you could end up making a mistake and going too deep. To finish the nut, I'll sand with progressively finer grits until I reach about 800 grit. And all I'm worried about is the ends and the top. Then I can take the nut to my buffer and buff those surfaces to a nice shiny finish. To install the nut, I'll add a bead of tight bond glue to the bottom edge of the nut, smear that around and get it uh, spread consistently over the surface, and then I'll place the nut into the slot. I'll put the strings back into their slots, tighten them down, and they will act as a clamp to hold the nut in position while the glue dries. The next item on the agenda is to do an initial fret leveling. So what I'll do is I'll take my precision straight edge. Normally I would use a notch straight edge here, but I don't have one for a 34 inch scale base. So I'm just gonna use my precision straight edge on the top of the frets. And what I'm gonna to try to do here is adjust the truss rod until the neck is perfectly level. Now I have the strings already in place here. But I want to go ahead and adjust the truss rod because once I remove the strings, I'll still have to do some additional adjustments to the truss rod to get the neck perfectly straight and level. And that's typically how I level my frets. I like the neck to be perfectly level. Now after I've removed the strings and get those out of the way, I can work on the fretboard without any hindrance. And the first thing I'm going to need to do is once again check to see how level the fretboard is because removing the strings and the tension that they create is going to change the uh, straightness or the level of the neck. So I'm going to check that with my precision straight edge and then make some additional adjustments to the truss rod in order to get that neck back to a perfectly flat level uh, condition. Now, 
Now, since this is a maple fretboard that has only been sealed with uh, boiled linseed oil, I'm going to tape off the fretboard before I do any fret work because I don't want the uh, dust generated from sanding off the top of the frets to turn the fretboard into a ugly gray mess. The tool I'll use to level the frets is just a simple precision fret leveling beam. And for an abrasive, I'm using 320 grit sandpaper because uh, I'm using nickel silver frets. So they're pretty easy to grind level with a finer grit of sandpaper. And the process is pretty simple. I just run the, the beam back and forth across the surface. And you can mark the tops of the frets with a Sharpie to gauge your progress. But once you've been doing it for a while, it's not that difficult to look at the actual fret and see whether or not it's been leveled. And then once I've finished that initial leveling, what I'll do is I'll take my fret rocker and check three frets at a time all the way from the nut back towards the end of the fretboard just to see if there are any high spots that need to be addressed. And typically when I do run into a high spot that needs to be taken down, I'll just grab my trusty uh, Nicholson three corner file and I'll use that to remove the high spot wherever it exists on the particular fret that's giving me trouble. Lately, I've been using a Stumac diamond fret crowning tool. I've got two of them, one in 150 grit and one at 300 grit. And they do a pretty good job of reforming the crown after leveling. Although I gotta say, I still uh, prefer my three corner file for doing this work. It's just not as fast. And the last step in today's episode is to completely disassemble the guitar so I can get it ready for the next step, which is going to be to level sand and polish sand, and then finally buff out the clear coat to a high gloss mirror like shine. All right, well, that's all the time I've got for this episode. What's gonna happen next is I'm going to level sand, polish sand, and buff out this clear coat finish to a high gloss mirror-like shine. So be sure to uh, join me for when that episode posts up um, in probably about a week. So until then, as always, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and for God's sakes, click that bell for notification. That way you'll be notified every time I post up a new guitar building video and you won't miss anything. And as always, if you want to help support the channel, click the uh, thumbs up button. That always helps YouTube to promote my videos. Or you can click that little thanks button and leave a tip. And if you want to do a little bit more, you can always visit my YouTube merch store and purchase a t-shirt or, or plans for making guitars or the tools that we use to make guitars. And until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back to uh, watch this guitar body shine.